What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael and welcome to Fudge Muppet. As you may know, the Fallout universe is home to a ton of wacky, over the top and plain stupid items. In this video, we're rising from the depths of Vault 111 to explore the wasteland, picking up some of the most ridiculous weapons along the way. We'll be taking a look at six of these which you can find on your adventures in the Commonwealth and because they're all crazy in their own unique way, they're not placed in any particular order. Now if you do enjoy this video, be sure to let me know in the comments section below if you want a part two because I had a massive selection to choose from when making this list and I'd love to go over six more. Also, all builds mentioned in this video are linked in the description so be sure to check it out when you get curious. So starting off, we've got the unique fat man known as Big Boy, specifically when altered with the Experimental Merv modification, or MIRV, whatever you want to call it. So firstly, Big Boy is the unique fat man you can buy from Arturo in Diamond City Market, and what it does is fire two projectiles at once. You literally fire off two mini nukes for the price of one, causing heaps of damage and obliterating your foes. It's super effective for any Heavy Guns Demolitions character, and it literally has the highest damage potential for any any single shot in the game. Already, Big Boy is a ridiculous weapon, but when you attach the Merv launcher modification, it gets really savage, sometimes even for the user. So with the Merv, you'll have significantly reduced range, and as a result, you must aim it high in the sky like you're using a mortar. Pull the trigger and you'll shoot out a mini nuke which turns into a cluster of six, falling from the sky and eviscerating all in its area of effect. Chuck this baby on Big Boy and enjoy shooting two clusters of six, making for 12 mini nukes of devastation. And that reminds me, this weapon goes beautifully with our Devastator build, which you should definitely check out. Next, we find ourselves with a weapon which is a lot more precise. What we're dealing with here is the Railway Rifle, a personal favorite of mine and also of our Tinkerer build. The Railway Rifle has a beautiful steampunk aesthetic and even emits steam while making a train whistle sound when reloaded. It's a marvelous weapon, but what's truly ridiculous about it is the fact that it shoots railway spikes and is able to pin limbs to walls. Yes, you heard that right. You can literally shoot off an enemy's arm, leg, or even their head and have it fly into a wall or other part of the environment pinned by a spike. It's a sensational sight, especially when used in VATS, because if you get a bullet cam kill, the camera will actually follow the detached body part to whatever it gets stuck in. Now, if you're outdoor, the pinning is less likely, but once I did shoot someone's head off with bullet cam, and it just went flying into the Sky Team Rocket style with the camera in pursuit. Things got really glitchy, but it was super entertaining regardless. Now, luckily for you, ammo is cheap, and the gun is reasonably strong, so get out there and try it for yourself. Now, let's head into Hubris Comics. Open opening the display case on the first level to reveal none other than Grognak's axe. If Bethesda hadn't already been putting enough Skyrim in your face, here's Skyrim in Fallout 4, which admittedly is a whole lot of fun. Now Grognak's axe is a two-handed melee weapon which is ridiculous for two reasons. Firstly, look at it, and secondly, it secretly has about the same AP cost as a combat knife, making it an absolute killing machine in the hands of a melee VATS build. It's reasonably powerful too, causing enemies to take additional bleeding damage and stagger more often. Obviously, this weapon is based on the same axe that Grognak the Barbarian uses in the Fallout Universe comic book series, and if you're looking to play as Grognak, we also have a build for that, although he's a drunk and doesn't use much VAT in our case. Now, the finishers or the kill moves are another major benefit of this axe, as they look incredibly gnarly alongside the medieval aesthetic of the weapon. You can also make strong wield it if you aren't a melee character yourself, but still want to see a battle axe lopping off heads on the battlefield. One of the coolest quests in Fallout 4 was launching a ship full of pirate robots into a skyscraper. It was a wonderful mix of 18th and 23rd century technology, as was the weapon you received in the process. This weapon is known as Broadsider, and it's ridiculous as hell because it's literally an explosive projectile firing human-held naval cannon. It's old-fashioned, but still packs a serious punch when upgraded, only surpassed by a fully upgraded gorse rifle, a missile launcher, and a fat man in terms of raw damage output. Its cannonball ammo is obviously hard to find in the post apocalypse apocalyptic environment, but fear not, because if you make use of an iBot pod to search for cannonball ammunition, it will yield 35 to 40 each time. It also has area damage which is large enough to make up for a slight lack of accuracy, but also small enough to mean that you can still easily use this cannon indoors and in tight spaces. It even uses only about half as much AP as a missile launcher, making it relatively friendly for a VATS character. Check out our pirate build if you want to make your playthrough even more
or over the top when using this unusual wacky weapon. Next on the list, we've got a weapon that was used by our Cryo Trooper build and also our ridiculous Santa Claus build that we made for Christmas. This weapon is the Cryolator, and it's another piece of experimental tech which you can actually find at the start of the game when you're leaving Vault 111. The problem is that it's in a display case with a master lock, so you'll need to up your lock picking game before you can return to get it. Once you do get your hands on it, you'll find it's essentially a frost flamer. Things get even more crazy, however, once you upgrade it, because then it turns from a mid-range cryogenic sprayer to an automatic high-power snowball machine. Hit enemies enough and they'll be frozen solid, only to be shattered by the next snowball that finds a weak spot. This silly but powerful gun was actually developed by the overseer of the vault as a way to pass time, utilizing components and chemicals already available in the facility. Thankfully, you also don't need any perks to upgrade it, so if you're feeling particularly Christmassy, you'll always be able to shoot snowballs. Now we're arriving at the final ridiculous weapon for the video, Lorenzo's Artifact Gun. This pistol looks like a gamma gun, however, instead of using radiation to take down enemies, it uses full-on telekinesis. This gun will rapidly shoot out big blasts of power which stagger enemies, sending items flying and corpses ragdolling across the room. Funnily enough, if you hop in a set of power armor and charge people down with the pain train perk, you can then use this gun to ragdoll them to death. It looks really cool if you shoot water with it too, and it's affected by Demolition Expert, as well as Nuclear Physicist, Gunslinger, and Bloody Mess. Now the quest to get this gun is a ton of fun, but apart from that, which I won't spoil, it's a pretty straightforward piece of wacky gear. I mean, though it has been done, it's hard to get more ridiculous than a telekinetic pistol. Enjoy responsibly, because apparently it wasn't made to be lethal. And there you have it, six ridiculous weapons in Fallout 4. And remember, if you want us to explore six more of these crazy weapons, be sure to let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching the video this far, and if you're new, be sure to subscribe for more. The builds mentioned in the video can be found in the description with all of our social media links. My name is Michael, and I can't wait to nerd out with you all again very soon.